Welcome once again, and thank you so much for stopping by, fellow fans of Clash of Clans. It is your host, Galadon, and it's another day of noob to pro to pro to noob to noob becomes pro, pro, you get the point. Okay, so yes, we are indeed going to take a look at Warden Walk Super Witch, all right? WW Switch, I know there's uh, some fancier name for it somewhere, but uh, we're just gonna go with that because Tribe Gaming recently has been pulling all sorts of three stars with this attack strategy against these fully maxed out Town Hall 14s. So of course, it was time for yours truly, the average semi-noob attacker to attempt after only taking a look at a couple of these. I believe we have three in today's episode that I'm going to try to watch carefully, copy the army, and more or less loosely the attack strategy as well, although that's going to be tough. Remember that these attacks are tailored for specific bases in these wars, and to do this in Legend League, it's going to be hit or miss. Obviously, the Grand Warden, it's a Warden walk in the beginning, taking out one entire corner, and more importantly, getting high value against critical defenses, and in this case, it was the Eagle Artillery. Then you've got an opening where the Barbarian King rolls in. That kind of completes the funnel and everything happens so fast here. I'm not even sure, but you can see the Queen. Everybody else goes down. Then finally the Siege Barracks goes down on the far right-hand side. That maybe is the ending of the funnel. And that may be what I was doing wrong now that I look back at this. Okay, so the Barb King, he creates the entry for the Super Witches and everybody else. And the Siege Barracks is simply the outer funnel that's going to make sure that the units stay in the core. The jump spell gets you all the way to the Town Hall. And again, like we've seen in so many tribe attacks lately, the Town Hall is one of the last targets. And that's just crazy to me. That is going to be difficult for me to get my mind around that because it always feels like you've got a very high risk of ending in a one star. And for those of us more average players, of course, the rule is always go for the shore too and hope that you can grab that third star. But of course, for these guys in the very upper echelon of competition, you know that it's a three star or nothing oftentimes, especially when you're facing those crazy clans like Queen Walkers and so on and so forth. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a ton of triples in the upcoming worlds, and you know you've got to be going for the three star every single time. So, yep, there goes the town hall. Not a problem, apparently. And, man, I'm telling you, I haven't said their name yet because I do think it's the worst name in all of Clash of Clans for a troop. But the Super Witches summon the big giant Larry XLs that are known as Big Boys. And the Big Boys are the big tanks that seem to help wipe out most of the defenses. And although they're effective, their name is still the worst in the game. The attack, however, appears to be one of the best in the game as, yes, it's going to be an easy, overwhelming three stars with lots of Larry XLs still left alive. So this is kind of what gave me the idea that perhaps we should be looking a little more closely at these attacks and then trying them ourselves. So let's move on to, yes, one of my favorites in all of Tribe. It's Eve Check. Love to watch him. And he's going to be doing it as well. And you'll notice the army, basically identical. The entry, almost exactly the same, except for this time, not focused on going after the eagle with the warden walk. However, you'll notice on the top right-hand side, the entry has already been made to the enclosure that holds the eagle. So you know he's got plans to get in there. And this is again, where it just becomes more difficult for the average player because somehow, despite all of those external trash buildings, Eve Check knows he's going to get somebody in to wipe out the eagle early. And you can already see the pathing down the middle to bring in the super witches and everybody else. We just have to wait for it to kind of form up and happen as the warden is going to take out the inferno tower first. There's the barbarian king and siege barracks and together they will get in and wipe out the eagle. Somehow, some way. I don't know how it happened, but it will. And then everybody else goes down the middle. There's the jump spell. And again, the town hall is on the far side. Come on. What are you doing? The town hall is so far away, but the confidence is high. The royal champion will be the one that rolls in from the right hand side here with all of those wizards and annihilates 
the Eagle artillery. So go figure. Sure enough, it was a plan. The Eagle does get some shots off before it gets wiped out by, well, actually, it was the Hog Riders as well. And remember that, we're going to bring Hog Riders in the Siege Barracks. A second jump spell to get all the way across the base because the funnel from the bottom of the Warden made sure that that was the only place for these units to go. And the big boys are going to lead the way right ahead of the Super Witches and everybody else. And sure enough, right into the Town Hall enclosure. And the Royal Champion survives long enough on the top right with the help of the Hog Riders to wipe out another Inferno Tower. And then by the time we've gotten to the Town Hall, it's a single Fargan turn on. Those are not as threatening because you've got so many units. Although at this point, actually, there's, there's not that many units left. In fact, it didn't look like there was a shot at a three star right here, but it's going to happen somehow, some way. And the Royal Champion is going to help out with her ability. You've got the Archer Queen as well at full health. A couple of cleanup troops doing high value work. A balloon on the mortar. There's an Archer. There's a Wizard Tower. And I'll be honest, at about 35 seconds left in this attack, as I was recording it, I looked and I thought, wait a minute, am I recording a, a fail, a two-star attack accidentally? And sure enough, somehow, all of these buildings get wiped out at the end of this attack at the same time, and Eve Check picks up what he surely knew, and Tribe surely knew from about the beginning was going to be a three-star. So we're going to copy this, okay? Get ready, but not quite yet. We're going to watch one more, that's right, XL episode from Galadon as Marlena goes in again and is going to use the same strategy. So we see this consistency, and this is where it helps for those of us that are trying to learn. We watch these attacks over and over and over and get an idea of what's happening, and we'll we'll just we'll, we'll do our best, okay? Honestly, you know it's going to be a mess because I have zero practice. You are going to see the first attacks after watching these replays. We're just going to go out and YOLO it Galadon style, okay? So first we watch... The Warden Walk, okay, so we know now the key is not always to get the Eagle, but to always get a funnel going to take out a corner or a big segment of the base and help make sure that the big boys and everybody else roll in. Wait a minute. What is... Okay, now that that's not where I thought they were going to go. I honestly thought we were going after the Town Hall this time. And once again, Town Hall's on the far side, and I'll tell you right now, I simply don't have the guts to conduct an attack like that. Although, okay, we'll try it at least once in today's Legend League attacks. We will go after the Town Hall last and see how it works out. Now, the Siege Barracks did again provide that outer final fatal funnel to make sure the units head towards the middle. Then a pair of jump spells to help guide those units towards the Town Hall. And finally, yes, wiping out the Town Hall with whatever you have left. Somehow, supreme confidence is all these players have. And I definitely lack that, so... We'll, we'll just see, okay? We'll try to focus, we'll try to concentrate, and we'll see what happens as apparently, also, did you notice? No poison spell. They're not bringing poison spells to this attack. They're just rolling in and dealing with the clan castle with a whole mass of troops because once you get into the middle of this attack, it is sort of spammy, right? They're all over the place, although right here, you can see that only the Archer Queen is out by the town hall, and apparently that is what Marlena has had to adjust right here dropping a few extra spells, the Rage, the Invis, to make sure the Archer Queen takes out the Town Hall. And I'll admit, I don't know if that was the plan or if that was a backup, but either way, it works out. It looks smooth. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One more thing. One more thing I was noticing towards the beginning of these attacks. When you drop down the bulk of the army, like the Archer Queen and everybody else, it is absolutely critical that the Warden's healers join that main section of the army. You have to have them deployed closely enough so that the healers and the Warden join the main segment of the army and are not their own attacking contingent. That would be disaster if the Warden is off by himself because one of the big things about this attack, and also notice that big group of balloons that's being sent in, the idea of that big pack of balloons is to keep the healers active as long as possible throughout the rest of the attack. Here, it's all over, and oh boy. That means it's all over for practice, and it's time for Galadon to get his attacks on. Now, I will tell you, and I'll warn you, that there are certain things that I didn't prepare uh, after I copied the army, and uh, you'll see it momentarily, okay? I'm not even going to bother to edit this out of the video because it's ugliness, and you guys may have seen it right there. Do you know? Do you know yet? Because Galadon didn't when the Warden is casting that nice little shadow floating above the ground, and then... In come the healers. Now remember, I am doing this. I am making these mistakes so you don't have to. As the warden is on air, of course the healers are not going to heal him. 
they're just going to stand there and fly because there are no ground units for them to heal. So quickly, I realized the mistake and my ways. And unfortunately, this just does not work out. But I, I'll tell you what, I will go ahead and show you the end of the attack because I did manage a bit of a save. We dropped in the Archer Queen, made it a queen charge, even though we had lost the Warden. And somehow on the first Legend League attack of the day, still managed to grab a two star. So it wasn't a disastrous start, although it wasn't great either. The next attack... We got so close, and it appears that it's going to be time that's going to be critical right here. So remember that the big boys move very slowly, and we time failed uh, more than once today. All right, more than one time did we time fail. But let's take a look at finally having an example of this attack being copied turn out pretty well on a relatively simply designed base. Kind of an afterthought Town Hall 14 with all the extra walls around the outside. But hey, nonetheless, we're going to give it a try. We start out with a Warden Walk, trying to grab good value. Now, think, what is he going after that's valuable over here? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that all of the good defenses, all of the important key defenses, were towards the middle. So there was really more just funneling happening here than anything else. Then, remember, I'm doing it differently than Tribe did. The Barbarian King and the Siege Barracks are going down together on the outside. Now, my hope was that the Barb King would turn left and the P.E.K.K.A. from the Siege Barracks would turn right. And that would kind of allow that funnel to happen right around the middle between 9 and 12 o'clock on the base with a super wall breaker opening the wall and then everybody else rolling in. And that is exactly what happened. I mean, it, doesn't it feel great when attacks actually go the way you think? Just for a few seconds, you're like, this is what I want to happen. And then it happens? You're like, what? Then, uh, okay, well, good. I'll accept it. And they all roll in. And we're going to go after the town hall. Now, the town hall was in the middle, so obviously not near the edge or the end of the attack like Tribe kept doing. And then, again, spell, timing, and placement. S-T-A-P is the answer and the key to get through these villages, wipe out the town hall. And when it comes to buildings, you took them all. So, yeah, it was fun to watch. It was cool to wipe this guy out with this attack and feel good about it. It was right about here that I thought, wait a minute. This is actually, this this has the potential to be a three star, right? And I'll admit to you guys right now, a little bit of a spoiler for the end of the episode. This was the only three star that Galadon was able to pull with this attack on this Legend League day. So showing you the highlights and not so much the low, okay, fine. I'll show you the low lights in a second. We'll make the video even longer. For those of you that want longer Galadon videos, enjoy as I babble away about how all of my attacks failed except for this one so no no we'll have to also tell you this a two star in legend league is not a failure especially for an average player i would say if you can get above 80 percent on every single attack you're doing well and so the key is probably avoiding the one star which again makes me think that perhaps this army is not the best for legend league because obviously this was a tailor-made army after a specific type of base where you're going to be chasing down that town hall as the last building. Right here, somehow we managed to have enough time. Notice the Super Witch going ham against the Expo, and believe it or not, oh, the last shot! The last shot from the Super Witch takes out the Expo, and that may have made the difference as we were short on time but still had a ton of units and big boys left. The Archer Queen rolls in, takes out the final building, and we pick up the 40 Trophy 3 Star. Now, I will admit that I did not really copy Tribe's strategy to a T for almost every attack, but then I decided on this final, the eighth of eight Legend League attacks, I would go ahead and try to be a little more daring, a little more risky, and start the Warden Walk after the Eagle. But again, look where the Town Hall is. It's going to be nearly one of the last buildings to go down in this attack because we are going to funnel from the top and we're going to do it Tribe style. So at the very top of the base, in goes the Barbarian King, Siege Barracks. You can see the walls are already open right here, which should allow, once those buildings at the 12 o'clock side of the base are down, everybody else to roll in right where you see that super wall breaker go. And we should get everybody in after the core and eventually get to the town hall, or at least that was the plan. Now, once we get everything down at this point, it seems like it's going pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward through most of the rest of the attack. And you'll see that the pathing seems to work we drop a jump spell they're going towards the core they're going after the queen the scatter shot now it's a long way to the town hall and perhaps at this point 
We should have done a little more funneling at the top. We should have tried maybe with the jump spell to get down towards the town hall. But instead, I saw the far scatter shot. I saw the Inferno Tower and the jump spell. No, you'll, you'll notice that the last jump spell is not spanning the area to get the units to the town hall. And remember, with mostly big boys doing the hit point damage, you need to be within that same enclosure, not over the wall with some sort of range unit. You need to be right there. And I didn't get myself there. And that is why we're going to end up, I'll tell you right now, with a one star. But the good news is it was the only one star of the day. Okay, it was the only one star. And it was because I went extra risky. Uh, maybe the spell timing and placement a little bit messed up. I thought maybe the invisibility spell would help out right here. But again, they're too far from the town hall and nobody's interested. The Archer Queen, she's got full health and her ability. But yeah, you guessed it. She is going to go to her right and not to her left. And again, look, she's got two big thick walls to get through. No chance that she's going there. And at this point, we knew we were doomed to pick up a one star on the final attack of the day. On a day that had gone pretty well. And I'll show you the numbers in just a second. I just wanted to show you guys this because obviously there were things that could have been done to correct this, like a better funnel and a better placement of the jump spell. But instead, there it is, the only one star of the Legend League day. So the overall League Day record plus 208, including that one star at the very end, only one three star. Many high percentage attacks that ended in time fails. So I think I could definitely improve on this strategy. Thank you, Galafam. Let me know if you try it yourself. No time for the regular outro, but you know how it goes. So I will see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Love you. No time for your outro. I wait the whole episode every day for just that part. I'm disappointed.